Hello and welcome to the second part of this mission. We did the first part last week with all the space shuttle launches going on. Here in this video not that much uh, in terms of launches. Theoretically there's one in it, yeah, from the late surface to orbit. But yeah, we're just going to fly to late with this uh, S toll, I call it S toll, short takeoff and landing because uh, the atmosphere on Lathe isn't as thick as the one on Kerbin and so we can't have enough uh, intake air for the... what are they called? Rapier engines, exactly. For the rapiers uh, to generate enough thrust downwards that we can do it uh, in VTOL fashion. So it's a nest hole, but it's still uh, an enormous help having those engines pointing down uh, when landing. So, what are we doing now? We are doing the first part of the burn towards Joule. We're gonna split it into two parts because it's more efficient and it would have just been too long. So, like, I would have started so early if I just wanted to do one burn that I couldn't have made it because uh, I would have entered the atmosphere. So, I did the first burn, we can swing around the planet. Very cool how you can see the Mon orbiting there, very cool. So we can swing around the planet and do our second burn here. And you may have noticed that our Delta V budget is very conservative. Let's say it that way. It's, we have started with 3700 meters a second. And now I made it of course, I wouldn't have made this video and I got more confident with uh, this kind of budget. <laughs> with my first late mission I had like 10,000 meters a second. When I came home I just throw thrown away like 5,000 of those. Um, 10,000. So yeah, with enough uh, gravity assist it will be okay. So. We can leave Kerbin there. You know, isn't this game just beautiful? Isn't this game just cinematic? It's a masterpiece, this game. If there's not a fucking bug occurring. But else than that, this game is very, very cool. So, we arrive at Jule. And let me say you, this part, like, I, I don't have the time warp mod installed. I probably should. Because this part took an eternity. Like, I was watching a whole YouTube video, like maybe five to ten minutes, in the time uh, that the capsule needed just to get on to Jules' height. Like time warp in this game is slow. So I hope they will add um, faster time warp in KSP2. I mean they need. You don't want to sit through two real life years of uh, waiting to get to the next uh, solar system. <laughs> in KSP2 there will be multiple solar systems but uh, in this one just one and it's already a challenge here so i don't know if i will ever make it to another solar system but it's cool that ksp2 will have a lot of end game content you know there are those uh, very good players that played kerbal space program since launch and they have visited everything but i'm not this guy i haven't visited anything like, not everything I, I've... Okay, so I wasn't... I was on Moho once, but not in this save file, so I won't count it. So Moho I haven't. Eve I've landed, but couldn't return <laughs> afterwards. So Eve, also a planet I want to land and get off from, which is the bigger challenge. Kerbin I was, of course, and Tylo I wasn't. I wasn't on Tylo. And on Bob. But I was on, what, what, what is the other called? Like just Bob, the moon Bob around Jule and the other one. I forgot the name of it, but they are pretty much the same. So Paul, exactly, Paul. I was on Paul, I visited Paul. Um, and it was funny because the mission in which I visited Paul was a, a mission where I wanted to go to Duna. Then noticed that my lander doesn't have enough thrust to get off from Duna, and then I just went to Paul. <laughs> yeah. 
you can do it that way I guess so here we are time warping further to lathe and here it is in its full glory lathe is before us so now we are doing our deceleration burn which takes 500 meters a second. I, I can't read it, it's very small to preview window in Premiere Pro. So we are decelerating now and after that can land. But you see we are in a very eccentric orbit. Um, if I'm going to the map screen again, mm, which is about now I guess. No, yeah, you can see we are in a very very eccentric orbit because like if I go into a completely circular orbit with the plane attached, we wouldn't have enough fuel. So I just fast forwarded until uh, our orbit was in a point at which if we just lowered the orbit, we would be able to land on an island on the side. Like, doing you know, I just wanted to have a place where Jewel is visible because it's very cool. Oops, <laughs> bumped into the transfer stage. So. Now comes the real deal. The landing begins here. So we can decelerate with the plane, which is detached now. It has two purpose aboard and a little crew compartment behind. So we can make a quick save. <laughs> Always important making a quick save. Um, even like two named quick save because uh, if not, it can end badly. So now lowering our orbit to a crash course then i thought like oops this is a bit too much you're still pretty fast so uh, doing it higher again and then we can get ready to land and let me tell you lathe is one of my favorite destinations ever in this game it's just cool it, it's like earth but with jewel visible which is like it has an alien feeling to it, but a cool alien feeling. So, now, plasma is building up, the tension is rising. Will we get through re-entry? I hope we do. So, let the re-entry begin. Re-entry? <laughs> we haven't even been here. Entry! Let atmospheric entry begin. And, like, do I have to say more? Look at this shot. Isn't it cool, like, cool being there, laid underneath us? This is just beautiful honestly this is nice and you see Tyler racing in the background it's cool like I love the true system just with all those moons it's like a mini solar system just without the Sun <laughs> but it has true only thing missing is tool having rings which would have been cool so here you can see me I have I had to do a little cut because I needed multiple attempts I just want to say it here to make it transparent but yeah I crashed the first two times this is the third approach but the third approach will be the successful one so we can deploy those side mounted engines into the end configuration to the landing configuration and start throttling up I will do full throttle and then we can land really slow you can see on the nav ball how uh, slow we will be going when we land and it's very helpful because the first time I went too late I was having like a, an F-14-esque lander with like swappable wings but at the end I had to land with like 100 meters a second and I needed like 10-15 attempts because it was so fast at the end I just landed in the water so here you can see already 50 meters a second they're already going pretty slow, but we can do slower, almost, and, and, almost, 40 meters a second, and touchdown, we have landed on late, yeah, very cool, isn't it, <laughs> a bit of a rough landing, but a landing nonetheless, so we can now decelerate to a halt, and reposition ourselves, because we were rolling down a mountainside which isn't that healthy and we don't want to get stranded on lathe it is a bit far away from home 
But at the other side, Lathe is like home. It has plants on it and stuff and atmosphere that is breathable. So there are worse planets to get stranded on than Lathe. Planets? Lathe is a moon. Jesus Christ. I hate it when people switch around moon and planet and now I'm doing it myself. There you can see Jewel. It's just extremely cool. Like seeing this gas planet in the background always present, always watching upon us. It's just cool. So now we can EVA our Kerbal out. Dramatic pause there. And almost. He has touched the surface of Lathe. I mean, it's not that special anymore, I guess, because I, for you it is, but for me, I have like, now this is the fourth Lathe mission. Yeah, the fourth. Yeah, so we have landed. And here I noticed that for the next time I should optimize the craft. But first, let's plant a flag. Yeah, flag out, proud Swiss flag out. So, where was I? Right. For the next time, we, I could optimize the craft a little bit. That instead of this crew compartment behind the cockpit, it has a cargo bay uh, where a rover can be uh, stored. Because missions with a rover are always cooler than missions without a rover. So, now we can get in. We can await the right time to start. And then... Almost, we are almost there. So, let us begin the start of the ascent. And we have lifted off the surface of Lathe successfully and we can get into orbit. Isn't this song just fitting for it? Rocking all over the world in the instrumental version. It's a pretty cool song from the 80s of course. 80s music is the best after all. So we can speed up the footage a little bit and our craft can also speed up and then we can get into orbit and here a very cool shot. Uh, I could do with all this plasma and you can see Lathe underneath and Jewel in the background. It's just, it's just cool, it's just cool. So we can get into orbit, we are almost there. Yeah, and here was the point, I noticed that I have way, uh, that I've brought a lot of dead weight <laughs> with me because um, in the last video you saw that um, I refueled this craft in orbit like I flew, I flew it to orbit the VTOL or STOL and then I refueled it but I also refueled Jesus Christ English so uh, you can also see that I have refueled the oxidizer in it and I noticed that I didn't even need the oxidizer to get into orbit it's Actually, I wouldn't have enough fuel if I used the oxi oxidizer. It's more efficient to just switch to the nuclear engines. So, but here we are at the ITS, the Interplanetary Transfer Stage. Isn't it a cool short name for Interplanetary Transfer Stage? ITS, it is. So, we can slow down relative to the craft, point ourselves to the craft and Retrograde again. Nothing special this docking maneuver. It's just a standard docking maneuver everybody does. So then towards the craft and we're almost there. You can see on the map screen that there's already a plane in late orbit and it's the same plane as this one from the last mission. So for next time I could imagine bringing a fuel tank with me instead of the plane. Then refueling the plane, landing it. Uh, bringing up again and flying back without the plane. Like, I would have a plane in, in the orbit, like constantly, and I only need to refuel it. Or even better, have a refueling station on the ground. That would be amazing, right? A, a, refu a refueling station on the ground where the plane can land 
get refueled and fly up again with enough uh, fuel to land again. That would be that would be a thing, wouldn't it? So now we can transfer some fuel from the plane. I should really have a name for it. Uh, lathe landing and ascending system. Uh, L L A S. That uh, doesn't sound cool. Let's just call it plane. So plane is uh, in an orbit, and yeah, I I wasted some stuff in orbit. I'm I'm littering space, but uh, I wouldn't have enough the enough uh, fuel to return basically, and so I need to use all my fuel available because at the end. I had to do some correction maneuvers I haven't shown in the video because it would just be boring seeing five correction maneuvers. But at the end I end up with 40 meters a second left upon re-entry. So the fuel on this mission is tight, isn't it? So now we can start our burn home. This will be the home burn to Kerbin, our trusty little home planet. And here you can see the orbital lines are not quite now. Now you can see the orbital lines rising in the Joule system and declining in the whole Kerbal system. And we can get home. A little uh, adjustment burn was needed uh, to, to do a plane change maneuver. But yeah, we can go back basically. And that's good. Because uh, with my first attempts on a lathe mission on an old save file a year ago or two, I couldn't make it back basically. But I guess my first tool system mission was a, uh, a mission to Val, which was pretty cool. Val is an amazing moon. I should do a Val mission next. No, I wanted I wanted to do another mission next. Uh, I won't say something. But the next mission we will do on this channel will al also be really really cool it will also involve a plane but i won't say the destination now so we can head back and this also in real life it, it, it like took an eternity i was just sitting there watching another youtube video just glancing at the screen sometimes because this uh like you need to fast forward faster in case be too please so here we are approaching Kerbin again and we can use the last bit of fuel to slow down a little bit like those 40 meters a second so here we are re-entering I'm spinning it around this crazily because it helps reduce overheating for some reason because it doesn't really make sense does it in this configuration but yeah we made it entered the atmosphere all our Kerbals probably dead because of G effects, but it's a game, so they're all alive. Parachutes out, heat shield gone, and then you can enjoy a perfect textbook landing. Yeah, I had to do the mimic. We landed, something exploded, but that's just Kerbal's base program, isn't it? So, the video is over. Goodbye, have a nice day.